Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Between Physique. Thank you for stopping by. You already know what this is. Welcome to yet another informational video. This time, the topic of the day is body fat distribution. So sit down, shut up, get comfortable, and bitch, get ready to learn. photo on Instagram a few days ago and um, you know it was my back and it was perfect lighting so it looked fairly good at least in my opinion and um, you know some people were like oh man your back is shredded and it's looking good and I've always felt that when it comes to my back it's one of the parts of my body which seems to get lean very quickly although the rest of my body may be like you know looking like 13 14 percent body fat my back it's like eight percent body fat I'm ready to go on stage pretty much the next day other parts of my body not so much and also I've noticed that this is not uh, universal when it comes to other individuals and I was always thinking why is that the case and are there you know physiological biological biochemical whatever the hell you want to call it differences and the answer of course is yes otherwise why would I be making this video so one thing I've always wondered my entire life is if you take individuals who are like you know somewhat fairly similar and um, you know they have a relatively similar level of conditioning why is it that for you know individual a you know, certain muscle group may be way leaner and way more shredded than individual B, even though the rest of their bodies are at least somewhat, you know, within a reasonable margin of, of error, uh, similar in body fat. So a good example in my case, and one of the reasons why I'm making this video is my arms. So if you guys remember that photo that I mentioned, my back is looking very good, but for some reason, the second you start to like, you know, wander your eyes over to either of my arms, it's a whole new, it looks like it's a different human being. It's like suddenly, it's not even gradual, just Boom, my back goes from 8% body fat, my arms looks like, let's be honest, they look like fat steps. They look like sausages. What is this? Vitruvian Physique's arms. Fuck my life. One thing I've always wanted my entire life is to get those crazy, you know that horseshoe that actually has like the feathering on the triceps and even though other parts of my body, for example my abs, my deltoids, my back like I mentioned, it can get down fairly lean and conditioning and it can look fairly good. Other parts of my body, for example my triceps and my legs especially, no matter what I do, they always seem to be lagging behind the rest of my body at pretty substantial rate, and that's not the case for other individuals. For example, Christian Guzman, even though we are fairly similar in height and weight, even though he is a little bit leaner than me, I completely admit to that, the level of conditioning in our backs are, you know, not too far, you know, different. In fact, I would say that I probably have a little bit of an advantage, but then again, genetically, my back has always been one of my strong features. But when it comes to the arms, it's completely different. It's like night and day. If you were just to analyze the arms, it looks like we're 10% body fat difference. And I'm wondering, why is that the case? This is the percent, this is the fat, and this is the total. And it's pretty interesting. You can see, you know, how much fat you carry on certain areas. And a lot of people think they have muscular imbalances and things like that, but they just carry their fat awkwardly or they, you know, or their fat distribution isn't, um, isn't symmetrical. If it's called body fat, why is it that your entire body may be 10% body fat, but then your back or your abs may be six, and then your arms or your legs may be like 15? What's going on? Also guys, before we get started, the two biggest sources for this whole video is number one, The Stubborn Fat Floss Solution, which is an awesome book by Lyle McDonald. He's considered one of the most knowledgeable people in the industry. And if you don't trust me, trust him because he's a lot smarter than me. And number two is a scientific article and experiment I found online, which is awesome because it directly pertains to this video. So if you guys are interested in, you know, reading up more on any of the topics I mentioned in this video or just, you know, checking out these articles, um, I linked both of them down below in the description. So physiologically, there are two big factors when looking at this. And the first one, and probably the most important one when comparing between individuals in terms of body fat distribution is simply gender. Okay, gender. If you guys have ever, you know, looked at a woman, you'll notice that Oftentimes, women tend to have a little bit more body fat um, in terms of the lower bodies as opposed to men. And men, on the other hand, tend to store a little bit more um, body fat around their midsection and their lower back. One of the reasons behind this, and pretty much the main reason, let's be honest, is gender differences, specifically related, uh, related to hormones. Men obviously have higher levels of testosterone, whereas women have higher levels of estrogen and progesterone. So right off the bat, what does this mean for men? Well, they're gonna have higher amounts of visceral fat. Visceral fat has sometimes been referred to as midsection, torso, deep body fat, because it's actually found underneath the abs. This is why some guys who have higher levels of visceral body fat, even though they may have like a six pack, it's kind of like protruding outwards. Some people call it like 
Unfortunately, they call it like the pregnant look because you have abs, but they kind of stick out like a turtle shell. That's because even though you may have abdominals and they may be you know, somewhat low in subcutaneous body fat, which is the layer of body fat found between the muscle and the skin, your visceral body fat is a little bit higher, thus you know, giving you that kind of protruding look to your abdominals. Women, on the other hand, tend to have more subcutaneous body fat, specifically in their lower bodies around their hips and thighs. Interestingly enough, there are two pieces of very basic logical evidence um, which kind of confirm this theory. So the first one is early in life. When boys and girls are pre-pubescent, they actually have very similar um, body fat distribution. It's only when they start to go through puberty in their early adolescent years that women tend to store a little bit, like I said, more subcutaneous body fat, especially on their lower bodies, and men tend to store a little bit more visceral body fat around their torsos. The second piece of evidence is later in life, women who go through menopause uh, who do not go on hormonal replacement therapy, they actually start to drift a little bit towards a male distribution of body fat, um, we're meaning more visceral body fat around the torso. And guys, just taking the science aside a little bit, speaking from experience, I have I've seen this so many times in my life. In fact, go look at the, you know, like regional level bikini shows on Instagram or Facebook or, you know, YouTube or whatever. It is not that uncommon to see women with very, very lean upper bodies to the point where we are seeing, you know, visible definition in the abdominals, even the ribs showing, but their lower bodies, you know, it's a different case. I've seen this myself with my girlfriend, Jordan. She's actually six days out, I believe, from her first bikini show. If you guys want to see that, you should go check it out here. And um, she has done fantastic. She lost like 20, 25 pounds. And in terms of the upper body, the fat was just like dropping off. Like her arms, her uh, midsection, her abdominals, her shoulders, everything is looking like significantly leaner than she was 20 to 25 pounds ago. And although her lower body has lost, you know, a considerable amount of weight, the legs to get to the same level of conditioning is two different people. It's like the upper body is 15% body fat or like 12% body fat and the lower body is like five or 6%, you know, ahead. It's just, it's interesting, but this actually happens for a lot of women. Another great example, if you want to go a little bit higher in terms of experience for bikini competitors, Lainey Bobster um, from Gymshark, and um, she actually, you know, she competed in the WBFF and she looked fantastic. Like she was lean, her upper body was shredded, she definitely had some, you know, some like abdominal midsection going on. She plays pretty decent, you know, pretty damn well in a WBFF show, which is not an easy task at all. Those are fairly high caliber competitions. Now her legs, and I say this with no offense at all, her legs obviously were not up to par with her upper body. Is that her fault? No, that's, be, you know, it's called being a woman. In fact, some women have actually spoke about, you know, like they, they almost feel, and they, they say like, you know, I could have sworn that as my upper body got leaner, my lower body, even though I'm in a caloric deficit, not only did it not get leaner, it seems to have almost gained body fat. And there is a little bit of science, which is kind of weird and kind of scary, but there are certain pathways um, that have been demonstrated that can actually liberate fatty acids from the upper body, and then instead of metabolizing them for energy, you know, because you're in caloric deficit, you're dieting, they're actually transported to your lower body. So essentially, your body fat in general didn't go down or up, it just kind of re-transferred the fat lower, which is really weird. Ladies, I really apologize, this video in general, uh, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but again, welcome to my channel. It's not about pessimism, it's not about optimism, it's about realism and science, and uh, to quote someone who is a great source of information for this whole video, Lyle McDonald, even though I think this quote came from someone else and he just kind of said it anyways, but I believe he said, when it comes to body fat reduction, women, they're kind of screwed. All right, guys, the next thing I wanna talk about is why this actually happens, because it's one thing for me to sit here and tell you, this is the case, this is the world, get used to it, deal with it, yeah, I could do that, but I want you guys to have an understanding, at least a basic one, a fundamental understanding of the science and the physiology behind this. That way, you know, it's not just like, you know, get over it. You know, you can have an understanding that even though you guys may be screwed, at least you'll understand why you're screwed. Okay, guys, before we get into all that, I want to do a super quick physiology lesson in regards to body communication and how your brain talks to the rest of your body and how everything works, you know, in conjunction with one another. So there are two main communication pathways in your body, and you can kind of think of it in real life as like, you know, it's like texting and uh, phone calls. Both are good and you use both, but you know, they do kind of different things. Okay, so the first one everyone knows is electrical signals. This is um, neuromuscular junctions all throughout your body and it's pretty much your brain sending these like lightning fast electrical sim signals um, through its nerves, through your nervous system, through its spinal cord, through everything all throughout your body, pretty much telling, you know, this muscle to contract, this muscle to relax and you know, all that good stuff. The second one is simply neurochemical transmitters. So we're not talking about electrical signals, we're talking about actual physical stuff which is sent throughout your body via the bloodstream, via, you know, via other 
other things to go somewhere, dump its stuff, and then whatever catches that, which is the receptor, then tells whatever is doing the action, you know, whether it be the, the tissue or the organ or the muscle, or whatever. It's pretty much saying, hey, we need to do this. And in our cases, it's saying we need to store or metabolize body fat. There's lots of examples of neuro, uh, neurotransmitters. For example, we got oxytocin, uh, which is like the love, love chemical, some people refer to it as. We got dopamine, which is very prominent when it comes to things like addiction, you know, cocaine addiction, exercise addiction sex addiction, you know, we got GABA, we got um, adrenaline as an example of this, there's so many of them. But the two major ones we're going to be focusing on for the purposes of fat loss are beta and alpha hopefully, um, uh, adrenal receptors. So there are a bunch of these, there's actually beta 1, 2, 3, 4, alpha 1, 2, whatever um, receptors, but the only ones we have to worry about for the purposes of fat loss are beta and alpha 2. And the only thing you guys have to remember is that Beta is a good one because it actually signals us to metabolize and burn body fat. So this one is good. Now, unfortunately, alpha adrenal, alpha 2 adrenal receptor, this one actually signal, signals the opposite. It's pretty much saying, hey, hold on, store body fat. So for the purposes of this video and you know, getting shredded, not the best. So guys, I'm not gonna go to the whole crazy biochemical pathway, but if you're really interested, what happens is there's a compound. Now, I've never said this, I've only read it, but it's called catecholamines, I believe, and it pretty much binds to either this or that, beta or alpha 2 adrenal receptors. And then this one increases something called cyclic AMP. This one decreases something called cyclic AMP, which leads to either, in this case, burning fat or storing body fat. Again, guys, it's all these little hormones, these little neurotransmitters, and it's pretty much just, you know, it's only two options, go up or go down. What happens in each case is gonna tell your body to do different things. So guys, the reason why I'm telling you this is because every body part, every, you know, muscular region throughout your body does not have the same ratio of beta to alpha adrenal receptors. And depending on the ratio between that, for example, it's 50-50, you know, you can lose body fat at X difficulty. But if this is twice as many to this, you know, it's a two to one ratio, you'll be able to lose body fat a lot easier in that one area because you have more beta two fat burning receptors as opposed to alpha two fat storing receptors. Now, if you have the opposite, for example, such as in the case of lower body subcutaneous fat for women, where the ratio has actually been reported as nine to one, you can tell that it's gonna be very hard for women to lose body fat simply because you can do all the caloric depletion in the world, you can do all the cardio, but the signal simply is nowhere near as strong as it is for other areas such as the upper body and a similar case in men because they have more alpha-2 adrenal receptors in their, um, in their torso and their lower back region. So guys, we're actually gonna use this as an excellent segue into our next factor which you know affects body fat distribution and why I'm doing this whole video in the first place Genetics. So guys, this ratio of beta to alpha 2 receptors, it's not universal. Just because some women have a 9 to 1 ratio doesn't mean that all women do. And it's the same concept between individuals. For example, like I said, my back, you know, it seems to get leaned very easily. Can this be because of advanced muscular development? Of course. But at the same time, can it be because my back, unlike the average, you know, the norm, has a higher level of beta to alpha-2 receptors, that could be an example. And maybe my arms is the opposite. Maybe they have less uh, beta or more alpha-2 receptors than other individuals, which is one of the reasons why I am not able to lose body fat as easily as other parts of my body or as easily as other individuals, you know, assuming a relatively similar body fat percentage. Now, I know in this video I say many times that men tend to store body fat around their midsections and their lower back, but a good example of, you know, genetic diversity and genetic vari variability and of the general population is myself because guys, I've never really had too much issues losing body fat in my midsection. In fact, my back may be the first thing to go when it comes to body fat percentage. At the beginning of a cut, like literally within four weeks, it's starting to look significantly more developed. It's always like four or five percent lower than the rest of my body. But my abs, they pretty much come second. Like once I get down to, you know, that 12 to 13% body fat range overall, my abs, they start to come in and pretty much eight weeks out of a show, I have a full six pack. Now on the other hand, my legs, which all the literature I've read said that there's no issue for men in terms of lower body fat distribution, that seems to be a womanly thing. My legs, they never get shredded. I have never once in my entire life, no matter how much I've, you know, no matter how lean I've gotten, no matter how shredded my abs and shoulders and back and everything else was, I have never been able to lose body fat significantly on my legs and get those crazy deep cuts, get those lines, um, get those feather quads. That's never happened to me before. It's funny guys, usually when I use these resources, especially from awesome people like Lyle McDonald, I agree with everything they say, but, and I quote, no matter how you cut it, men's ab fat simply is simply not as hard to get rid of as lower body fat, in capital letters, ever, 
No, not with me. Literally, guys, my abs, yeah, you have to die a little bit, but they come in. Other parts of my body, never. So, damn it. So guys, what I'm trying to illustrate is that genetic variability does exist in populations. We are not built, you know, the same way. This is why if you guys, you know, follow the exact same routine in terms of diet, exercise, nutrition that I do, you will never look like me. And this is just another example of one of the reasons as to why that is. Maybe I just have more alpha-2, you know, adrenal receptors in my triceps and my legs. And that's one of the reasons why I can't lose body fat as easily in those areas as opposed to other people or as opposed to other parts of my body. I love how the one part of my body which I can't lose body fat on is the same one that women have problems with, indicating that I'm like ladylike. Like, fucking God. And you guys may be wondering, okay, you know, this is kind of theoretical. You pretty much just connected one piece of you know scientific concept to you know, an explanation, but is that actually the case, or are you just trying to you know use some bro science? Not exactly. There's actually a really fantastic study which I found online called Genetic Determinants of Regional Body Fat, sorry, Fat Distribution. And it says, and I quote, complex segregation analysis undertaken with a panel of nuclear families, which is just a fancy way of saying you know, general families, brother, sister, mom, dad, undertaken with a panel of nuclear families indicates that a ma major genes may account for a significant fraction of variance in upper body fat and abdominal visceral fat. This was a study done with only male identical twins, pretty much eliminating any difference you may have. Um, and they were able to analyze what is the genetic diversity? What is the genetic difference in body fat distribution between individuals who are genetically identical, twins, versus between pairs of twins and other pairs of twins. Pretty much what the study found was obviously that all people have differences in their body fat distribution. But, and I quote, when the changes in specific fat depots were considered, it was observed that there was about six times more variance in response between identical twin pairs than within identical twin pairs. So guys, this is a fantastic piece of evidence because you know we all kind of had a hunch that this was the case, but this actually proves it. There is a genetic component in regards to body fat distribution because these twins have very similar distributions as opposed to other individuals, meaning that you and me, even though we may be similar in conditioning, similar in musculature, similar in, you know, in every other you know, piece of genetics, all these other factors, when it comes to body fat distribution, we may be vastly different. I may have shredded abs, you may have shredded back, he may have, you know, like shredded legs. We may all be the same body fat overall percentage, but where that body fat is stored is different between each and every single individual. Okay guys, that is it. I apologize if this video went very long, but when it comes to science and, you know, the magic of fat loss, I tend to ramble about these topics because I really want you guys to have an understanding of the fundamental scientific principles behind all of this. Thank you so much for watching. If you, you know, if you have any questions, leave a comment, and if you liked it, make sure to leave it a like. That way I know that you guys like these types of videos and I should do more of them, and that way it'll spread the message. And I gotta go now. I'm done.